So I, yeah, okay, okay, well let's talk. <laughs> you know, let's talk about my internet bill. How about we talk about that? Any, oh, but hey, you wanna hear a COVID, uh, COVID joke? You want, I got a COVID joke for you, you ready? Okay, okay, you ready? Uh, good, because it might take you a couple weeks to get it. No, that's the joke. A couple, cu oh boy. Uh, hey, I know right in front of the office here, we've done a bit of cleaning. I think, I think we could, I think we could use some, some salt. So watch some of the corners if you're walking uh, on the streets because of that snow we had on Tuesday, uh, like early Wednesday. Hey, welcome to season two, episode four already of uh, Niagara 411 Live. I'm Lee Sterry, powered by WeStream, fueled by Gales Gas Bars Limited, hosted by Fiddler's Poor House, partnered with Niagara 411. We got a lot coming up today. We've got a, just a jam-packed show. We have um, a Niagara gal who's, who's going back on the chef show uh, that we'll talk about. We have uh, got uh, Gil Beaulieu is going to come in and uh, teach us a magic trick. We'll fill you in more about what's going on uh, inside. Come on in. Yeah, okay. So, hey, one of the things, while we're getting set up here too, by the way, if you happen to be uh, watching this thing and you are uh, by, by trade, and uh, I'm going to get rid of the get rid of the jacket here because it's a little cool in here but it's not that cold um, yeah back to what I was talking about if you have you want me to sit down Kev okay gonna get me wired for sound here so I can hear you and me when we chat yeah chat 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 okay there we are yeah okay I'll get to what I was talking about thanks Kevin so um, what we want to do is uh, have a bit of a, a, a more slick, entertaining kind of uh, um, Hollywood-style introduction to, to the show while we're doing things like this, getting the earpiece in and you know doing things that you don't really give a hoot about. Um, so if you happen to be watching this show and uh, you are or know somebody who is skilled at uh, video editing, we'd like to talk to you and uh, give you credit on the show for uh, working with Kevin and putting a putting a nice Niagara slanted intro together for this Niagara 411 live that'd be pretty cool so um, Kevin Jack is with WeStream WeStream is the power behind the technology that uh, drives this thing and uh, he's the guy to uh, to chat with all you have to do is uh, there he is right there with his fancy schmancy uh, Gales Gas hat on. Uh, Kevin, what's the best way uh, for somebody with those kinds of skills to get in touch with you? Uh, get in touch with WeStream. We're on Facebook. You'll see us tagged in the post there, or just leave a comment. And again, we just like to put together a little maybe 20, 30 second uh, smooth little intro so that we don't have to uh, watch me clip up Lee for sound. So if you are somebody, <laughs> and I know there's a lot of people out there that are pretty skilled with uh, video editing, I am not necessarily that person. So I got no problem with uh, with deferring to somebody more skilled than I. So, and of course, we'll give you credit on the show and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's cool. All right. Um, now, one of the stories that has been actually going viral over the last little while, uh, we're going to get to in just a moment. But this is the thanks for Kevin for putting that up and reminding me. This announcement was just posted on Niagara Four One One about a half an hour ago. And it is the announcement about an announcement. Sorry. That's all right. We'll come back. Uh, it's an announcement about an announcement uh, made by the Ontario government. Niagara's elementary and secondary students will not, caps, be returning to in-class learning next week. Okay. Up Whispering three sweet nothings into my ear. Okay. All right. Can I hear me now? Yes, I can. All right, so uh, Niagara's elementary and secondary students will not be returning to in-class learning next week as per the Ontario government's announcement today. Um, and I was, I was reviewing these announcements just before we went to air here, and I read that out loud, and Kevin, uh, over there getting ready to produce this thing, went, oh, <clears throat> because... 
He is one of those people, probably like you, that has school-aged children at home, and it means, well, at least another week of family upheaval and adjustments to in-home learning, not in, and all those, all the things that, yeah, it's, uh, that go it's along tough, with it. Lee. It's got a five and a seven-year-old at home, so they need a lot of hand-holding. You really can't get much done while you've got two. I know there are people in worse situations talking to a family of four children just oh. last weekend and going, I, I have no idea how you're getting through. I understand that they're trying to make uh, the best timely decisions, which is why we're being strung along week by week, but finding out on Thursday that here's your plan for the next week and they'll be at home again for another week, it makes it, it, makes it very difficult. But yeah. I, I know I'm not the only one, but it does make it tough. But you know what? Uh, all for the greater good, and I'm, and I'm on board. No, I totally, and, and I think most people have that sort of sentiment. Okay, we get that we have to do this, but man, it's getting old. You know, it's just getting old. And as you were saying, finding out on a Thursday about Monday, perhaps that's something that we could find some way to adjust, is that notification period. Say, okay, look, we're going to do this at least for another, I don't know, month or whatever it is, so that people can put, uh, parents might hate me for saying that, put some sort of plan in place. But when you're constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop, as the cliche goes, it kind of keeps you off balance as a whole family. So anyway, that's the latest announcement this morning. Uh, now, it doesn't say how long that they're going to not be going back. It just says they won't be returning next week. It doesn't say when. And there will probably be more posted as the show goes on. Now, as, as things get posted on Niagara 411 by Nick and his, co his uh, contributors, we will pass along any information uh, related to what might affect your life as the program goes on. Speaking of the program going on, as I mentioned right off the top, one of the stories that's been getting a lot of play nationally, provincially, uh, locally, uh, pretty much virally, if you will, and it started with a salon, we're going to have the owner of that salon on in just a little while, a few minutes actually, um, that found a loophole in the closure of her hair salon and spa business. That loophole being the film industry. And you say, what? Well, um, Alicia Herter uh, is with Chrome Artistic and... Uh, barbering. And what she did is set up a pretty professional looking set in her establishment and ostensibly invited people to come in to be interviewed for a film that she is making about the industry that she is in and the customers that use her services. And the first reaction is, okay, it's a it's a it's a loophole. Somebody found a loophole, and there was a, there was a fair bit of negative style feedback. And then when we reached out to to Alicia, she is more than more than pleased to come in and, and chat with us. And there's been a whole new twist to this story, which is off the charts interesting. So Alicia Herter uh, here that operates Chrome artistic and barbering in, uh, in Niagara is going to be with us. And not to be outdone, uh, Matt Bodis is with Frontier Barbers and Company. Actually, they're located uh, down the street near where Geneva meets uh, St. Paul uh, and, uh, and the access to the 406, etc. So, uh, Matt, his business is closed. And we've got a couple, so we've got a couple of perspectives here. Uh, on the Niagara slant on that story, uh, the fil the, there were stories printed all over, they, they were all over the internet, you may have seen them, in the fact that, oh, that can't possibly be a legitimate film type environment because all of the restrictions and all of the regulations that we have to meet as film companies to, uh, to, to make movies and do films and documentaries and things of that nature to abide by all of the 
uh, all of the COVID rules, et cetera, it can't possibly be real. Well, it's going to be kind of a, uh, I think it's a great story. Uh, and we're not, we're not taking a position either way, whether it should do it or should not do it or whatever it is. Uh, but it's a great story, and it's Niagara-based. Also, Jen Jenkins, uh, she, uh, Alicia's uh, and Matt coming up in just a couple minutes. Jen Jenkins from Niagara Falls was a previous contestant on Master Chef Canada. Well, she's coming back, and the new season, or the, the, the newest version, if you will, that is going to be aired of Master Chef Canada, it's called Back to Win. And uh, it starts airing, I believe, February 14th. Jen can correct me if I'm wrong. But Jen's going to be joining us at about 12.45 to talk to us about what it was like being on MasterChef, what it is like now, what she's uh, expecting to, uh, to achieve out of this. And, of course, she's not going to spill the beans, <laughs> pardon the pun, uh, because that would just, like, ruin the show. It's like somebody coming on uh, and telling you uh, who won Survivor, you know, three months before it's done. But that is happening. A great conversation. Looking forward to talking to her because it's always fun to find out what goes on behind the scenes in, uh, in a lot of these programs that, uh, that you watch from the so-called reality perspective. Um, has Bernie showed up on your front yard? That's something that's really taken off. Uh, I just thought of that now. Somebody sent me a picture of my house. I had no idea Bernie was at my house. Somebody sent me a picture of my house with Bernie Sanders on my front lawn. <laughs> I, I didn't even know he was there. I would have taken him a cocoa or something. Um, yeah, it was quite the... Uh it, it, it was viral a viral meme, meme fest. wasn't it? Yeah, really, really viral meme fest. But you know what? I got to hand it to uh, to Bernie Sanders because I don't know if most people are aware of this, but what he did, instead of being irritated by it or embarrassed by it, uh, he embraced the whole concept and he produced or had a company produce for him or whatever. Came up with the idea of producing T-shirts and sweatshirts and mittens and things like that. Um, with the image and all of the money that they made from selling these items is going to charity. And at last count, it was over $2 million, Kevin, that they have been able to donate to uh, two or three different charities. So there's a situation right there uh, where a politician, instead of reacting negatively and uh, thinking that he, he's being demeaned by it, embraces this thing and does some good with it. What a great, what, kudos to Bernie Sanders for turning it, uh, turning it into yeah, something. Couldn't, couldn't agree cool. more. And Lee, just got pulled away there, but I know you were uh, teeing up the fact that Jen Jenkins will be on the show from Niagara Falls. Yes. As she's returning to MasterChef yes. Canada. Yeah. Wanted to share with you and everybody else the uh, the little promo video here. Oh yeah, let's see this. That, uh, that there she is. They put together. Jen Jenkins from season five, MasterChef Canada, and I am back to win. Since you last saw me, I completed my first year of culinary school. I also moved to Ontario. We just uh, moved down to Niagara Falls, as well as had another baby. Wow. The last time Hello. I was here was an incredible experience. It was very nerve wracking. It was just pure fear and doubting myself. This time is more about confidence, uh, knowing that I'm putting my best foot forward. I'm gonna be stronger than my excuses and I'm gonna win. <laughs> Awesome. Obviously with a whole new look as well by the time we get uh, to that show. So there is, uh, there is Jen Jenkins back to win on Master Chef Canada and she will be here on Niagara 411 Live at uh, about 12.45. Uh, also, uh, our friend uh, Gil Beaulieu. Bo, 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 I, I, yeah, we just have a hard time with I, that. I, I really, I really uh, want to not mess up Gil's name. Beaulieu. Okay, I think that's it, right, Kevin? Yeah, Beaulieu. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Sorry, Gil, if I uh, butcher y your name, I'm really trying uh, hard. I'm really not very uh, bad with names usually, but there's something uh, I, I've butchered your name a few times, and I apologize. But yeah, we're going to have friend some, of the show, huh? 
Gil's a good friend of the show. Oh, great friend of the show. And you'll remember uh, back when uh, Kevin and WeStream started the live stream Niagara platform, Gil did a weekly show. Well, weekly, right? The, yeah, it was weekly. Magic by Gil. It, Magic by Gil. And, and the cool thing about Gil was the fact that he actually taught you how to do a magic trick. And uh, because a lot of magicians won't do that. They just, you know, uh, secret's a secret. You know, you never tell. Magicians never tell. Uh, but uh, see, I have these regular deck of playing cards. You'll notice nothing special, nothing <laughs> up my sleeve. <laughs> uh, and uh, wrapped in uh, an everyday uh, elastic from broccoli from No Frills, as you'll see there. Uh, so uh, we're going to do... Uh, Trek with Gil coming up at uh, what ten after one one fifteen something yeah like but that. something like that so it's really cool so we got Jen Jenkins who's about to become a, another TV star we've yeah. following her that kicks off February fourteenth she'll be by in about half an hour Gil Beaulieu at the time you just mentioned but Beaulieu one. thank you you're so smooth go Beaulieu okay I got, I got, got a little it. bit of French in me I got to think about the uh, New Orleans Beaulieu okay. and without further ado uh, Lee we've got uh, Alicia from Chrome and okay. we've got Matt from Frontier so I'll let you kind of take it away yeah terrific. Um, who have we got? Uh, we're going to have both of these uh, folks on the screen at the same time. Uh, right in the center of your screen, uh, I'm just going to take a, a flying guess here and say that that's Matt. Uh, Matt Botus, uh, Frontier Barbers and Company. Matt, welcome to the show. Thank Can you so you, much. We're it's in? Okay, good. We've got you. And, and Alicia Herter from uh, Chrome Artistic and Barber is on the far right side of your screen. Alicia, hi. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. So, Alicia, I want to start with you. Um, I'm not sure whether you expected the kind of notoriety or the coverage that you have been getting when you came up with this idea, uh, but when did you find or come up with this plan to be able to slide into the COVID rules and, and, and do what you're doing? When did this hit you? Um, well, the seed was planted already a couple times in the past. I mean, like I, I've said it on other media platforms, we have a great vibe in our shop. So the seed was planted, but it's it was almost like fight or flight time. You know what I mean? When it came down to time for me to think if I was going to shut down my 20-year business and go on assistance, it's called fight or flight. And at that time, I won't say I found a loophole. I applied my idea, right? And I, I obviously applied it in a very intelligent way, hence all the media I didn't do it to be a genius. I did it so I could move forward safely in my life, right? Okay, that, that word loophole is the first one that came to mind when mm -hmm. most of us in the so-called media world saw this. It's like, oh, somebody found a way to skate through this. There were also some comments I saw from people in the, in the film industry that said it, it, it can't be real because of what we have to put up with every day. So how, how did you first get, and, and I know the story's changed since then, but how did, you, how did you deal with the psychology of that sort of blowback when you got this started? Um, well, you know what, here's the, here's the funny thing about media and censorship, right? Like right now it appears because there is certain people um, that are blowing up pages repeatedly. There's people with multiple aliases that are hating on me right now. But I'm going to say this, the outcome of support, I didn't know what I was going into. But now that I realize how many small businesses I represent and how many people that feel the same way, the it was overwhelming. I didn't expect it at all. But I am I'm way more support than I am haters. That's for sure. There's a big voice here not being heard. And now that I've done this, the people that have reached out to me, there's a lot more people than media is showing that feel the same way I do. Matt Botus, Frontier Barbers and Company, just down the street from us here at St. Uh, St. Paul. Now, tell us about your business. You've been in business a while and you are currently closed, correct? Yes, yeah, so we've only actually really been in business since May of 2019. So we were only actually open officially for 10 months before the first lockdown. Then we got shut down for three months. And we've only been really back since like the end of June, kind of working towards making sure we were properly situated in case this lockdown happened again. Mm -hmm. So we've only, we're coming up to two years in the next few months, but we haven't actually even had our full year of business. Um, and yeah, you know, we're just a traditional barbershop. We are slightly different. We do have a full bar and, uh, and cigars that we do sell. Just trying to 
make the experience a little bit uh, a little bit more exciting, a little bit more welcoming. But unfortunately, we are we are closed and choosing to stick with the current guidelines. Okay. Well, this I did not know. Uh, a, f a full bar and cigar emporium and uh, and b and barbering services. Now, when, how did you come up with that concept? This is another unique concept, an, an, another twist on an old on an old style business. For sure, you know, it was more about how to offer the best experience possible. So, <laughs> getting a haircut is a it's an intimate experience. When, like with your with yourself and with your barber, yeah. you build a relationship, and we really wanted to extend that into not just the haircut, but into also the waiting um, before and even hanging out afterwards. So having the bar gave that like kind of waiting room area just a little bit more of a relaxed feel you have a little more conversation before covid there was great atmosphere where you can actually meet and talk to other clients who are there build those types of relationships so it's something that we wanted to build on that's interesting it's kind of an old uh, old cliche is the fact that uh, the people the two people that know more about you than anybody else are your bartender and your barber exactly. and uh and you kind of fit the bill on both those scales. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was, it was a fun twist on pretty classic industries. Yeah. Uh, so, Alicia, let me let me come back to you. Since this first uh, round of what I might call naysayers that uh, came to the foreground after the style of your business was was announced and made public. You have, it's almost flipped around entirely the other way because there are people now that are saying, hey, what they're doing is, is really got some traction and has some credibility and there are other film people reaching out to you. Explain how that's flipped around. Well, like everything else, and I mean, it's interesting what show I'm on right now because Niagara 411 actually has me blocked from commenting, but I'm going to say there's a lot of speculation. No, sorry, but there's a lot. I know where I am right now. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for both sides of the news, which is why I threw myself out tears of the wolves. I can't imagine what the comments are saying, but okay. there's a lot of speculation. I mean, I've read tons of comments. She's not doing the rules. I'm an actor. Where's Actra? Where's this? Where's that? If I wasn't allowed to operate, if I had been doing something at this point, would I still be operating? I am going to the, not only am I following the rules, I'm going over top above and beyond. I'm allowed to have 10 people, we operate at two. We have gone every safety standard, which is why we are able to operate. A lot of it's speculation and it really sucks. So I think once the experiences are now pouring in and the auditions are getting finished, we have tons of support. People are gonna start realizing what they have to go through to get in the chair. It's a lot more than you go through to get a loaf of bread at Avondale or a bottle of booze at the, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I, I, I do yeah. know what you mean, uh, but a lot of people might not. So you segued into my next question perfectly. What is, what are you doing? How does it work? Um, every person that, when you book your audition online, and a lot of people are calling saying, can I book an audition? Well, no, we have quite a, quite a bit of information that needs to be relayed before you even think about entering the building. It outlines everything. It's, it's not only a talent release. Everyone, I've heard comments, oh, you sign a paper at the door and you're in. No, you take a Niagara COVID screen. We take your temperature. We mark it. Everything is sanitized from the time in. You're not even allowed to enter the building if there's anyone else in the hallway. It has to be clear. You wait for a text to come in. Everything's explained when they come in. We are six feet apart until they are mic'd up and they walk over into our completely sanitized space where Misa, I've been, I've been tested. We test twice a day. It's written down right there. So when everyone says about the PCR test that's lacking, we don't have a staff or a crew on set for more than three hours breathing in the same air. It's not like that. So that's how when people want to say, well, you don't have a PCR test. When you go in a shopper's drug market, you don't get one either. Right. You can go shop in there for 45 minutes. Like, yeah. And, so what, that's, and, that's kind and, of, and what is the experience like when the person is in the chair? There is somebody obviously filming. You have uh, lights. You have basically what looks like a film set, correct? Well, yeah, absolutely. To keep the crew minimal, we don't. We have everything preset. Like right now on our floor, we are working with a movie maker. So our floor is marked with all these little red things that we have to spin around and know how to do lights. So we set up our positioning. It's, it's standard. Um, the person mics themselves up at the table. So we're not within distancing of the of the actor. The actor walks over. We might we put the cape on. We move the mic for optimal audio, and right there we start our interview. 
Okay. The interview does include a service for sure. The in interview includes a service, but we kind of just throw questions out there and see what feedback we get, right? Like okay. real news, like what they're actually thinking. Okay. Um, how do you come up with those questions? Um, my <laughs> Carla and I are very creative. Like this is what <laughs> I mean when people think this is a new idea. We've been, Humans of New York is what inspired this. She bought me the coffee table book. It's an un unbelievable book if nobody's seen it, but it's a small picture. It's a little picture that, and the little story beside it tell, it speaks volumes. I loved it. We started thinking about, we have a book of, it's called the what if book. We ask our clients questions like that anyways. I, any of my clients in the chair, I don't do small talk. So I'm not talking weather. So if someone's kind of not boring me, but we're not getting deep, I'll say, so what makes you happy? And they're like, what? I'm like, three <laughs> things. What makes you happy? And if they don't have an answer, now we're talking about why they don't have an answer, right? Like, so it's deep. It's good. It's good chat, you know? Okay, I want to come back to you. I have a, num a couple more questions. I'm fascinated by this idea. I do want to come back to Matt. So, Matt, now you do have still a non traditional style um, barber shop for the lack of a better word frontier barbers and company you said full service uh, bar cigar emporium or whatever you want to call it etc and, and you are currently not operating at all you're shut right correct we've, okay. uh, we've closed down okay so let me let me ask you the tough question while you're both on the screen together what was your reaction when uh, as someone in the same industry when you saw and, and experienced what alicia's doing with her business yeah, honestly, the first thing I did was I called around and see what the steps were. And honestly, like, we are not happy that we were closed. We are actually very upset because obviously this myself and my wife were both in this 100%. We have no other income streams. So the first thing we, what we looked into is what are the steps necessary? Unfortunately, I didn't get enough information to understand the full amount of costs that go in and around it and what kind of business transitions that have to be done in order to do something like this. And then we also looked, but then we also looked into um, just the current legislations that are going on about the actual hairdressing industry and how we are closed. And you know what, it's the choice that my wife and I decided to make that we're gonna stay closed just for the safety of our staff, for the safety of the community. Um, our kind of viewpoint is the sooner we can get done with the whole lockdown, then everyone can go back to work. So okay. that's kind of where we've kind of positioned ourselves. So you're going to be able to weather. You're going to be able to work your way through it. However, well, what are you doing for money? You know, it's, it is difficult. It is difficult. We are trying to use the government assistance programs that sure. are available. Okay. We've spent the last six months when we were opening, kind of swirling away everything that we could because we kind of figured another shutdown was going to come. Yeah. And we've also kind of pivoted our business slightly different because we have the bar. We've opened up a whiskey club where we do online whiskey tastings, where we actually utilize local restaurants who also are struggling to help build the support and uh, business that way. It's not something that we do 100% of the time, but it's something that we're trying to launch to help stay within the means of the legislation while also joining support uh, uh Good for you. I don't, I don't know that there would be a lot of people or a, a lot of families, couples that would uh, survive the kind of stress that's involved with this. But to go to one of the things that you said, teaming up with the restaurants for the tastings online, etc., is uh, my own personal opinion uh, is the fact that with both of you and others in the entrepreneurial side of our society and small business world, we'll come up with so many creative ideas while we're going through this that there are going to be almost entire sectors open up that nobody ever thought of when this is all over that will continue and, uh, and be part of local economies. That's just my little editorial piece. On it. Alicia, let me ask you a couple of questions. You referred to the actors. Now, these are people that have made appointments to come in, uh, have their hair done in one way, shape, or form, be they male or female or whatever, uh, but they pay. They still pay to have the service, correct? Yep. Yes, very. Yeah, they do. They pay for the audition hour. That's the way we've decided to charge, and I've got a bunch of people, again, from actor and these professional actors. I'm not charged for an audition. I'm like, I got two words for you. Depending on how old some of your viewers are here, Speaker's Corner. Who hasn't made the drive in a packed car with all of your change together to just go on there and go, my name's Alicia. We used to drive to Toronto to just get airtime. There's a lot of people that don't have voices here. There, and guess what? When you have reporters like Grant LaFake News and you talk and everything gets flipped around, you're not going to get any word out. You're not going to get the truth out. Where is our side? 
let's get some real news here. I mean, I can't wait. Some of the people we have coming in and some of their stories are unbelievable. And they've never been heard, right? Like, so, yeah. Then you've, no, done, the, this, um, you've done this again for me. You once again have smoothly segued into what my next question was. Uh, how long <laughs> are you going to be filming these uh, auditions? And what are you going to do with them? What do you see as the finished product? Or is there going to be a finished product or will it be ongoing? I mean, there's a lot of things you can do here, right? A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, we, we are looking into two people. We've been approached by two different people. Um, and we are, we're looking to come up with a trailer. Right now, our content, I don't know if I'm, I, I would like to go another week because I, we've got people coming in this week that I think have big stuff to say. We are making a trailer right now that we're going to pitch. Our original idea was a 10 to 12 series podcast featuring okay. really cool people in the chair and see where it went from there. But we've been approached by quite a few people now. Like there's been a reality TV offer. We've been offered now by three or four people that want to arrange it, people that want our content. So we're staying independent and we're searching right now for the right fit for the arranging. And do you have a wait? I'm assuming you have a waiting list. I was going to ask you if you did, but I'm assuming oh, yeah. you have a long list of people that have shown an interest in this. Unbelievable. We right now we are booked with auditions until the third week of February. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, just yesterday, my it was brought to my attention that there's actually a group of people collected on Facebook um, that are sabotaging my business and threatening to burn down the building and come after me. So I've contacted the police. Not much interest there, but we'll see. Um, yeah, they this, are related well, to somebody. I, I, sorry to yeah. interrupt you, Alicia, but this is this is really horrible. I mean, I, you can yeah. agree with somebody or disagree with them, but you don't threaten to burn down their like commit arson for heaven. What yeah. does Facebook and these? So I thought these social platforms didn't allow uh, violence-based comments on their oh. sites. Well, I mean, come on, like we know by BLM and vaccine talk, they pick and choose what they want you to hear. They they threatened me and actually the Niagara Regional Police, I'm not going to say they weren't interested, but the man I spoke to last night told me that she's been talked to. Well, no, they've sabotaged my business. We're getting people that are booking auditions and not showing up. And my, my Carla and I, we have to take care of childcare. We have kids in homeschool. So not only is it disrupting kids, like it's it's really, really malicious. You know, um, okay. a, a parallel I have to this, and it's perfect, and I don't want to say, um, I'm not going to point out anybody. If there was a sinking ship and everybody was on the ship going down, myself, I figured out how to make a life raft. That was everyone's choice, what they did. I made a life raft. As I'm getting away, I've got people standing at the side throwing daggers at me for getting away. But yet they're not going after the community spread, which is 11%. It's it's zero to two percent in small business, right? So I mean, there, I feel I'm getting unjustly attacked for sure. Okay, Matt, you have uh, you, you've obviously taken a different approach. And uh, Alicia, while you were talking, uh, while Alicia was talking, uh, Alicia was doing this like, call me because uh, you know, user. If you're interested in chatting with her, I mean, she uh, sounds like she's suffered all the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune with this thing, right. uh, and can maybe. Help you uh, avoid some some potholes, but um, and you said earlier that you have you just have a different way of a approaching this. What do you think when you hear something like what Alicia was just talking about about the the malicious behavior and attacks online? That's part one of the question. Part two is what sort of feedback, if any, have you received? From, from your customers in the public or anything of that nature? For sure, number one, I don't condone any threats on business. This is someone's livelihood here. It's, we're all doing what we can to make it through this very unprecedented time. Like, trust me, when I opened up my business, I was not planning for a pandemic. So if the, my choices were come with resistance, I would not appreciate the feedback. So I am sorry that you actually are receiving these things. Yes. Um, on the flip side though, once the news articles about uh, the media aspect, like the business shift has come out, I did receive some notifications from clients asking, are we going to be doing the same thing? What's our choice? And we just opened and honestly said, listen, this is not something that we want to do. Uh, we don't necessarily agree with the way that it's happening, but for us and our best choices, we're going to remain closed, follow the legislation, God, like God hope, by November, I think, or February 9th or 11th, we should be getting back. It may be extended, mm -hmm. but our, our goal is to protect 
our staff. We have staff members who've been directly impacted by COVID. We have staff members who are pregnant. We have um, customers who are at risk. We have family members who are at risk. So we've chosen to take the route of stay shut down whether we agree with it or not. If we have problems, we will go to our local MPs. We will try and go through the, the necessary steps to help reduce the lockdown and reduce the impact it has on our businesses. Uh, this to both of you, as we go through this week, we heard a couple of days ago or late last week that the extension of the stay at home order and, um, and restrictions here in Ontario would be continued for another two weeks uh, beyond what the original deadlines were. And I think that takes us to what, February 9th or something of that nature. Do either of you as small business owners get notifications as to uh, potential dates of relaxed uh, restrictions, et cetera? Or, you do, or do you just like us have to pay attention to the daily announcements that come out? I personally just listen to anything that comes out on the news. Um, yeah. One that we hear from other restaurant owners, from other industry owners, and just kind of then look into what they've announced on okay. the government website. Alicia? Um, yeah, same. I mean, if they had, uh, how how would they be able to keep keep us current on how they move the goalposts? They do it every five minutes. I mean, yeah, okay. oh, we have these restrictions. Yeah, no, I do the same thing. I just have to pay attention to whatever baloney gets out there that day, right? All right, so um, Alicia, one more question for you. When, uh, I hope it's when and not if, when we're through this COVID silliness that we're going on, and I use silliness in a serious way, um, will you continue to do what you're doing or will you do a sequel or um, how, how will you approach the next phase of your business? Well, like any entertainment project, how we would need to get some feedback before a sequel, but we are definitely putting out our podcast. Our podcast is necessary. We have people now traveling to say their piece. I mean, we want to give them a platform. The options that goes from there, stay tuned, right? We would love to continue. I mean, if this was it, if this was, we love the pace, we love the style, I would love to continue this. If everything opens back up, I would continue. The difference would be if someone was just coming in for a haircut, we would shorten the service and let them do that. Okay. But we would still offer the platform, especially with the attention we've got now. I mean, yeah. Well, I have to be perfectly honest. When Kevin and I were kicking around uh, content for the show today, uh, this story was one that we discussed at length. And we didn't want to send it in a direction of being proponents, if you will, of somebody skirting the rules. Like, you I know, appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but neither did we feel comfortable not doing the story. So that's why we wanted to talk right. about the fact that there was more to this than the, like what we were reading and seeing and hearing was just sort of the tip of a very large iceberg that you created. And, mm -hmm. and we found it interesting. We wanted to ask you the, the easy questions, like the softball questions, as well as the, as the hard ones. And um, this is obviously something that you've taken seriously. And, um, 100%. And, and, and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing, seeing the result of it. Um, I, don't know, um, I don't know how it'll, it'll play out. Have you, have you been in contact at all, or has anybody been in contact with you from the provincial government or... Uh, enforcement, if you will, as to what you're doing? Um, the provincial government direct, illegally, secondhand. No, since the, what what was um, put on other pla news platforms when the two officers visited me at my work, I haven't seen anybody since. I haven't been contacted by anybody. It's just been the um, provincial licensing um, officer's daughter and her boyfriend and her friends that have been contacting me. So that's an interesting twist, but I, I have a feeling one has to do with the other because no, I haven't talked to anybody in a week and a half. Well, to go to one of the things you mentioned, we're gonna, we're gonna send you off to uh, film another actor in just a bit here. Yeah, but, thank you. Yeah, but um, one of the things I did wanna mention is, is the fact that you alluded to your perception, and I say it's your perception because it's not everybody's, of uh, some, some local media and other media outlets, et cetera, and I hope you will always remember that uh, we will talk to anyone about anything and try to paint both sides of the uh, of the canvas 
if we can. And I really appreciate you telling us uh, telling us your story. I appreciate your real journalism. I was excited when when you guys contacted me. I I knew what I might be going against in the comment section comment section, but as far as you go, I think you're a great journalist. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. The comments uh, we can't control, but uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> but but the questions we can, um, and um, whether people agree with you or not. Um, Good luck with uh, with your business uh, Thank you so now much. now and in the future, and you as well, Matt. And I know you haven't been at it as long as uh, Alicia. Before this whole COVID thing happened, was your business doing well? Were you were you healthy? Were you vibrant? Were you liquid? Um, how were things cooking when you were uh, b- before this whole thing hit the fan? Yeah, we were actually getting a great response from the community. Uh, all of our customers were fantastic. We've become really great friends with everybody. We actually went from just running it, myself and uh, Brittany, my wife, to having staff and growing the business itself. It was fantastic. COVID really definitely hindered our business, but for the most part, even through the middle between the two lockdowns, we've had a great response and Matt, we really enjoy being part of it. Okay, so which is why you feel good about hanging on till we're done. It's hard. It, it's difficult because obviously we want to get back to work as soon as we can. That's right. our, our main goal as entrepreneurs, as members of the community. Okay. Um, we hope that our customers feel the same about the responsibility aspects that we're trying to convey by staying closed. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure we're still here when the lockdown is finished. Well, um Kudos to to your resilience, and we hope you are as well. Matt Botas, Frontier Barbers and Company, Alicia Herter, Chrome Artistic and Barbering. Thank you both uh, for coming on here and um, and and opening up and helping us uh, take another step through this long journey. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. Okay, you can. You can almost taste the angst and frustration and not to put too fine a point on it, uh, fear, if you will, uh, of these people trying to continue their livelihoods. And they've done it in two very different ways. And I, uh, again, to go to what we were talking about, they're not business people in isolation. They have families, they have children, they have all those other things that other families have to have to deal with. Uh, Kevin and I were talking earlier about that, how that announcement of the fact that uh, students will not be going back to class in in class learning next week as had been originally scheduled. All of these things are impactful and when we talk with these people it it makes me, me personally, feel so incredibly lucky because, as you can tell, I'm old enough that uh, I've gone through the, the young family routine and I don't have to put up with that kind of stress that, that younger families do and entrepreneurs do and small businesses do and all of the things. It's not, like I said, it's not just the business. It's the, it's the walls sort of closing in from a, a bunch of different directions at the same time, this is a very, very difficult thing. Uh, and, and to Alicia and Matt, I sincerely do appreciate you both being here and, and talking about your different approaches and, and your thoughts on where your businesses are going, especially since they're in the same sector. Uh, it, made it made it interesting as opposed to talking to a hairstylist or a hair salon uh, and, and, a, and a shoe store. I mean, you know, very different things but these were people from the the same sector the same life here in niagara and i appreciate their comments too kevin about what we're doing here at niagara 411 live um because we came into this thing when we were talking about it originally and you approached me originally about doing this show last year uh and it was a real flyer we just took a, a flyer on it we were down the street at sas fitness at the time one of the one of the local businesses that was a casualty of of covid because um we were doing this at a time before the uh the the rule came out that landlords can't toss tenants out of their buildings and uh, unfortunately um sas had to move and uh, we'll approach uh, 
them at some point in the near future find out how they're doing as well. Uh, but my point being that this whole show was an experiment right from the get-go. And it was an experiment in trying to reflect what the thoughts and feelings and experiences are in Niagara, by Niagarans and for Niagarans. And, uh, and that's what we've been trying to do. So, um, and we're going to stub our toe sometimes. There's no doubt about it. There will be things that uh, will show up in the comments that say we did a crappy job, and maybe so, but so be it. Uh, and what we're trying to do is have that reputation. I, I had somebody tell me the other day that uh, they, they enjoyed this show because the quote was, well, they'll talk to anybody. And, and really, I think that's a pretty good brand to put on the program. We will talk to, to anybody. And, and we appreciate Alicia and, and her comment. And I don't know what, uh, I, I don't know where the thread comes from when she mentioned that she was blocked from commenting or, or participating in Niagara 411. I don't know. Niagara 411 is not ours. It's, uh, it's Nick's and his contributors. We partner with Nick for content and we love to do that. So that, that not being, uh, that notwithstanding, Niagara 411 Live is its, uh, is its own separate entity. And um, we have no burnt-in allegiances, really, to any group, political or otherwise. Now, Lee, just want to uh, open Turn my mic on. I want to provide an, <laughs> an, an update here. I uh, just got a text from Alicia as soon as we got off the air saying that uh, update, they are at our workplace charging us right now. I'm assuming what? she means bylaw officers. I doubt that's NRP jurisdiction. So I said, okay, when you get a chance, click back on the link, and we'll see if we can get her on before the end of the show to find out exactly what's transpired. But she says, yeah, right now as we speak there. See, first time we got to use a little breaking news line there, Lee. Breaking news is that uh, Chrome and Alicia there, they're getting, uh, they're getting fine. And if anybody wonders, they're right in the 7-Eleven Plaza on Lake Street, the north one with the gas station. That's where they are, tucked in around the corner right beside Roland Pizza. Did we contribute to this? I, I don't know. I, I mean, she's got a lot of media attention. So, And at the end of the day, I was very surprised in talking to her, Lee, that she is making a legitimate documentary. What, what may have began as a loophole has turned into a legitimate film project. Well, this is what we were trying to get across. She's working with filmmakers. People do have stories to tell. You began by saying that, listen, barbers and bartenders, they're the ones that people speak their mind to. They yeah. have stories. Yeah. I, I would absolutely watch a documentary of people sitting in a barber's chair in a salon chair. Answering those kinds of questions, yeah. yeah. Answering the Just real questions of real people. John and Jane every day. Absolutely. And uh, you mentioned the comments here, so you know what? I want to uh, just throw it up here so people can say that, yeah, there are, there are some comments here, and uh, people have been hotly debating the topic of small business owners and the salons and what they would do, et cetera, et cetera. So we encourage people to keep commenting there. And, of course, the link is there for everyone. As you mentioned, we will talk to anybody. So yeah. if you ever want to come on the program, uh, feel free to. But yeah. uh, I'll just let you know, Lee, and I know I'll let you take the direction of the show. But uh, Jen Jenkins from Niagara Falls, who's going to appear on MasterChef Canada for the second time, she's in our green room. Well, yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. And we'll await, uh, we'll await uh, any further news from Alicia. Wow. Jen Jenkins. Hi. You at home? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I see your sign there, love where you are. So I guess you better love being at home these days, huh? It's, it's tough some days, but <laughs> happy to have a home. <laughs> well, we, uh, we played your little trailer uh, video a little bit earlier, uh, which showed some scenes from your last experience on, on Master Chef. And uh, you've obviously changed your hairdresser since then. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, the purple is fun and vibrant. I had about a decade of really fun hair, but a lot of upkeep. So, yeah. and I moved away from, yes, my favorite hairdresser in Grand Prairie, Alberta. So, I was, it's hard to trust it with some people going that bold of colors. So I understand. I well, kind of, not <laughs> me, but I, you know, yeah. I get it. <laughs> so, um, now, your previous, you you said something cool in the stra in the trailer for the for the new one, the the back to win series is uh, I am going. I think if I can if I can quote it correctly, I'm going to outperform my excuses. I'm going to be stronger than my excuses. I'm going to be stronger than my excuses. That's right. Now, what does that mean? What did you mean by that? 
I actually picked up that line from a good friend of mine, Ashley Pearson, who in a point in my life where I just needed to stop making excuses, said that to me and just said, you need to be stronger than your excuses. And that comes with everyday life. So I just figured with going and having this second opportunity, there is no excuse. I have to just do it and be stronger than the things that maybe I'm scared to approach. Uh huh. Just go for the gusto. <laughs> Now, you said uh, also that uh, since that previous series that you were on, you have uh, gone to your first year of culinary school, right? Yes, I have. I went up to Stratford, Ontario, and they have a lovely culinary school up there that I attended for four to five months straight. Um, and it was an incredible experience. Just to say that I finally got to go to culinary school, which has been a lifelong dream was great and that's what brought me out to Ontario. So how did you get on to that first series of MasterChef Canada? How did they how, how did you apply or how did they vet contestants for that? Honestly, I was watching it one night and they were doing a challenge and I was like, "Oh yeah, I could do all of those." And my husband jokingly said, "You should apply." So I looked it up. They weren't doing any casting, and about a month later, some random person messaged me and said, "Hey, applications are going." So I applied or I filled it out and left it for about a month cuz I was kind of scared to take that jump either way, being rejected or not. Um so I made my video, I sent it finally, and I heard back from them the very next day. And it was just, my, I freaked. I absolutely freaked. So what was the, now you, you mentioned also in the trailer that it was a, an experience of fear and stress <laughs> that you were going through that first time. Uh, do you and since then of course you've gone through the experience once you've gone through the culinary school which probably gives you some sort or should give you some kind of confidence that you got some sort of basis for what you're doing do you think you'll be as uh as fearful or as stressed this time as you were the last time or are you going to go into it sort of like eh, i'm cool now Walking in this time felt completely different because I, I knew where I stood in this world. Like going in first time, you're so vulnerable and you are going in the second time too. But I just felt like I am I deserve to be here. I absolutely deserve to be here. So it's like, let's just show them what I have to the best of my ability. How many contestants are in this series? This is a top 12. Top 12. And all of yes. these people like you have been on a previous show. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So, but none of you, none of you are, have won before. You're all back to win. Yes, we're all back to win. There's no previous winners, but there are a couple um, second place contenders uh, in this one. So that's the closest as it gets to winning. They've already been right to the tippy top. So they're going right full in and... Yeah. How long did you last in the first season you were on? I was top seven in season five. All right. Okay. Uh, that's respectable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, the question that I know the, the question you can't answer is how the season wrapped up because, uh, I mean, you know, and we can't tell it because yeah. that would be <laughs> the, that would be the big spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, but... The, the big question that people like me that have no idea what goes on behind the scenes where people like you are doing these shows is what is different between what you experience behind the scenes and what we see on the screen? Well, from what you guys see on the screen, the craziness of it all is very, very real. That is not played up whatsoever. What everyone else doesn't get to see is the amount of work that gets put into this production. I mean, you wouldn't like, it looks like there's 16 of us in a room, 12 contestants, three judges, or maybe a spare judge. And you think that's it, but there are so many people on the other side doing their work too and watching. And it's, yeah, you kind of forget the cameras are there after a couple, right. a couple of times because it's just, you're in there to work. But it's an unbelievable process, and the amount of people that it takes to pull off a production like this is impressive. Are people nice to you? 
Of course, of course. Oh yes, everyone's nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how how hard is it to hear your work that you put passion and effort and love into be critiqued by by other people? What does that feel like? I mean, with anything, it's it's difficult, but it's you take it with a, with not a grain of salt, but you have to take it with a learning curve. I mean, they're not telling you this to make you feel like a bad person or a bad cook. They're telling you how to improve yourself. So you take it as a win. You take that as I'm learning. So what, again, I'm so tempted to ask you about stuff that happened this season, but I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> were you happy with this season? Can I ask you that? Oh, yes. It was incredible. I mean, the whole experience and filming in a pandemic was a whole nother world, but it was, it didn't take away from the enjoyment. And I got to meet other people from different seasons. So we kind of got to know what their season was like and what went on with them and how they felt about it. And also get to meet the person on the screen because they've been there. I've been there. And you get to meet this person in real life. We so see- it was you almost get starstruck a little <laughs> by each other. You're like, oh. We see the judges, of course, of all of these reality shows uh, in in production and the final version of, of the shows. Are the judges themselves pretty much in real life as they present themselves as personalities on the show? Oh, yes. They're very much themselves. I mean, we don't get to spend a lot of time with them. A lot of the time, it's uh, we're there to film. We're there to get the job done and impress them. But when there's a lot of talk that you obviously don't get to watch all on television. I mean, we're talking about 16 hour days, working our butts off and it gets squished into 45 minutes. So, but they're very playful. They're very kind. They're always quick to let you know that you did a good job, but here's my critique. Okay. So, uh, how long does it take to film one of these seasons? How long did it take you to do? What is it? Is this season seven? This would be season seven, yeah. Season seven. Okay, so how long from stem to stern did it take? I can't disclose exactly how long, but I definitely was away from home for a small time period. Okay. And you, it can vary, so. Do you have to put up uh, your own expenses or, or do they pay you to be there? Also not allowed to share that. <laughs> you can't but, share uh, that? No. I okay. mean, they take care of us in the best way because they know we're having to to leave our families right. and they do everything that they can to okay. make that comfortable for us. Okay, just feel free to say, no, I'm not gonna tell you that. That's all right. <laughs> <You can't laughs> but but these are questions, you know people are interested in these, oh, yeah. in, in, in these questions because uh, most of us will never do what you're doing. Um, uh, Lee, I'm just gonna hop in here. Hey, sure, Jen, it's, Kevin. It's, it's Kevin behind the scenes. Just wondering, professionally, are most of the people on MasterChef Canada uh, professional accomplished chefs? And where do you stand in that realm? Well, with it being Master Chef, it is all home cooked. So okay. it's like on my first season, it was strictly based off of nobody's head training. You've never worked in a restaurant. You've done very limited food service type things. Whereas this time around, we got to come back with whatever we did in between our season. Like I went to school. That wouldn't have been okay the first time around. Uh. Okay. You know what I mean? You had to be very yeah. raw, very do you, new to the... Do you start the, feeling a lot of requests from restaurants? I mean, here in Niagara, this is a culinary mecca. Are, are people yeah. reaching out to you saying, hey, I saw you on the show? Yeah, I was going to ask that, yeah. No, you wouldn't... Uh, no, <laughs> not exactly. I mean, it's... it's a, The food world it goes very, very, very far. So, I mean, can I stick my nose in certain areas if I wanted to and bring up MasterChef? Sure. But at the end of the day, you have to go in and do the work. And unfortunately, it doesn't give you a kick off of like, hey, come work for us. <laughs> uh, well, that might happen after this season. You never know. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, a new ha- hairdresser, the whole thing. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she can go hook up with Alicia over there, get her hair styled. Exactly. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, but Kevin's question uh, dovetails into what I was going to ask you is, what do you do uh, with your with your time now? Like, you're not you're not always doing a TV show. What do you do? Well, I am a stay at home mom of two kids. I have okay. a 15 month old and a four year old. Uh, 
with the uh, lockdown and pandemic going on, my daughter's no longer in school. So she's been home and we've been doing the online schooling thing. So, I mean, I know other stay at home parents can agree with me where that chews up a lot of your time. Oh yeah. Uh, summer months, I can't wait for summer to get out and start gardening again. I plan on having an extensive garden this year, which is exciting and looking to volunteer in the Niagara region at small scale farms because I just want to learn more. I kind of want to go that way in my food direction okay, and just learn how to be more sustainable. Ultimate, uh, ultimate goal, do you see um, some long term career developing out of this or is it something that will always be a passion and a hobby pursuit for you? I think at this point in my life with my children being so young, it will be just a passion and a hobby for me because being a stay at home mom is everything right now and it requires a lot of my attention. Eventually when I get to a point where my kids are older and I want to establish a career or establish a business, I absolutely will look that way. Right. But right now it's about just building my own home and being comfortable here. Wonderful. Uh, well, when COVID's over, Kevin and I would love to come over for dinner, so just keep that in mind. Absolutely. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, and, and thanks for being here. Uh, so many wonderful people doing great things here in Niagara. And uh, Jen Jenkins, uh, we are dying to know how Season 7 turns out. It begins on what, February the 14th, somewhere around there? February 14th. Sunday, okay. February 14th. And you are back to win. I am back to win. All right. <laughs> well Thank done. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, good luck with the family. Uh, enjoy that homeschooling, and uh, we'll talk. To, we'll talk. <laughs> I here. was listening to you when you reannounced that they were opening, and I was like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. Don't shoot the Don't shoot the messenger. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, Thank you so much, Lee. Take care, Jen. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you as well. Best of luck. I'll be watching. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Bye. Jen Jenkins of Niagara Falls, Master Chef Canada, back to win season seven, uh, beginning February the 14th. What a lovely uh, young lady. And just again, I'm just, since we started this show constantly, amazed and gratified at the wonderful people that we come across in the Niagara Peninsula that have so many stories and, uh, and, and so many experiences that are are fabulous to listen to uh, and be a part of. So uh, we're happy to be a part of that. And you can do that at any time. All you have to do is, as it says right there on the front, join the show live by video chat. Click the Zoom link on the post on Niagara 411. We are Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry, Kevin Jack of WeStream, providing the technology. Gail's Gas Bars are our um, main keynote sponsor they are fueling this program as they have been fueling niagara for 50 years in the next 50 or more as well so jessica friesen and her gang thank you very much for being a part of us and uh, continuing your support and your faith in this show niagara 411 nick and all of his contributors great to partner with you and of course uh, dave there you go gail's rewards by the way all you have to do is click on gales.ca couldn't be easier uh, for all the details of how being one of their regular customers can benefit you and uh, you obviously can benefit them. Uh, they've had to readjust during uh, COVID as well. Um, there are two or three of their locations that have had to close since we announced that last week and you can find all of that on their Facebook page or their website as, as well. Uh, so we appreciate that support as always. Uh, Dave McPerry and Fiddler's Poor House. We are sitting in this lovely sun-baked window today. Oh, it's wonderful to feel the sun at, at, uh, at my back today. It's al almost, it's cold outside, <laughs> but uh, it, it feels uh, spring-like and, uh, uh, and nice in here. That's one of the things, too. You're talking about experiences that you can't have here during this COVID thing, and it's on the face of it, you never thought of it as a big deal. But one of the things that my wife loved to do in the dead of winter is to take walks through, uh, especially, well, obviously more in the spring, not necessarily now, but when, uh, when it became time to think about flowers and plants and things of that nature, before it was nice, is walk through greenhouses 
in cold weather where all the all the plants are starting to bud and it's so hot and it's steamy and it's lovely. It's almost like a it's almost like a walk through summer. You so know? It's tropical. It, it is. makes me feel like I'm at one of those uh, all inclusives after a rain shower. Yeah, and uh, and it's one of the things that uh, my wife and I love to do is just take a just take a waltz through uh, a greenhouse and uh, and get that feeling of warmth that that radiates in those places. And Yest- yesterday was fantastically with that sun on the oh, face. Oh man! And today looks like it's going to be another one of those days, a little cooler. And as you can see from our our weather bug there right above me, yeah, um, it's you know, going to stay some, pretty cool. Yeah, we got some cool days ahead. Went tobogganing yesterday with Did the you? fam. Great yeah. fun. Yeah. Yet we played hooky on online school, so there we took the go. afternoon off with the two kids. Headed out to uh, Mel Swart Park in Thorold. There's just a little berm there, and we had a blast. You know, if you're blast. if you're a parent with a lot of patience, you can just say to your kids, "Hey, listen, you're not going to graduate high school till you're 20. Deal with it." <laughs> 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 no, sorry, bad joke. You can joke. see in the background there, Lee. We've got uh, our finest four NRP officers walking the beat downtown St. Catharines, strolling by. Yeah, ladies, gentlemen, good to see you. Ladies and gents uh, of Niagara's finest, wow, they're out in full force. And Lee, not to uh, steer you in, a, in any particular direction. You can steer me have, wherever you want. We do have Gil in the waiting room, and we'll get to him in just a second. And we're also waiting to hear back from Alicia Herder from yeah. Chrome. When she got off the show with us, she texted me right away to say that either the bylaw officers or whomever would be enforcing charges were there right now and charging her. So we, we want to get an update from her. But speaking of and kind of... In a similar vein, uh, I know you also wanted to look at some of the COVID numbers yes. in Niagara, just to get a sense of where, where, we are, where we're at. Let's do that uh, quickly. And uh, Gil, uh, happy to have you uh, standing by. And now these cases are improved somewhat from what we've been hearing very recently. But it's been a while since we have posted these figures. We used to do this at the beginning of every show. And... Uh, there was a quite a lengthy period where we were reporting increases in the single digits, like two and three and five and six and et cetera. Well, new cases on January 27th, that being yesterday, 104. Now, it's down from maybe last week, but it still seems high to us because of what we have been reporting. So 104 new cases uh, on January 27th. The active cases on January 27th. What does that mean? Oh, oh, it's a 13. I thought that was a period at first. No, it's 1,399, almost 1,400 cases active uh, yesterday. Newly resolved cases, 121. Total number of cases in Niagara, 7,547. Total number of deaths, 289. That is sad, sad. Total number of resolved cases, 5859. Now, active case count by municipality. One, this is one of the things that people always say, yeah, but where are they happening? Well, they're almost happening by population, as you might see on that graph. St. Catharines, obviously the largest municipality in Niagara, has the largest number of cases. So mathematically, the numbers make sense. Is that 500, Kevin? It's a little blurry. Yeah, it's 500, and yeah. then Niagara Falls, 269, 169, 154, Welland. Yeah, So, and, and those would be the... the three largest uh, municipalities. Yeah, but the uh, the next stat here, Lee, by or per 10,000 kind of levels the playing field. Yeah, look at Niagara on the Lake. 42.8 cases per 10,000 in the municipality. So that does that is comparing apples to apples, irrespective of the population of those areas. That's a, that's a high, that's a fairly high number for Niagara on the lake. Um, there, are, there are no reasons stipulated for this. Again, St. Catharines comes in at second place at 34.8, and then there are a bunch around the same number, Lincoln, Niagara Falls, uh, Thorold, Welland. Um, yeah, I'd say the one that jumps out for me, Lee, is hmm. Grimsby being towards the bottom. I think we all understand that, okay, Wayne Fleet might be at the bottom just because it is so rural and, and homes are so spaced out. It's, yeah. it's not a dense population. Grimsby, on the other hand, is a rather dense population. And it's yet a, per 10,000, they're, they're second best in the region of Niagara. Yeah, it's a, it's a dense population. A lot of the Grimsby residents are transitory as, True. as well. 
it's 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 not um, it's not really a retail sector very much um, as, as some of the others as well, where people might be in groups. You true, know, true. Um, it's very residential. Very yeah, yeah that, that, that's my take. No, that's a good point. On it. But, it, but it's interesting. I don't know that Grimsby would be considered that different than, than St. Catharines. Would yeah. be that different than West Lincoln or Pelham or yeah. some of the other. So it's, it, I just found it interesting that it kind of jumps out at me. One of those, one of those sources that we, we, we can't report because we don't have as well is where everything comes from. And these are the things that drive restaurant uh, owners and hairdressers and people like that. Um, it drives them nuts because we have the numbers, but we don't have the details as to exactly what sector these are coming from. And just to give you an idea, Lee, this graph speaks to it a bit. I know that I know the text is rather small for you. So that high bar there, fifty-seven point four percent, is contact with somebody who already has it. Exactly. The yeah. next one, twenty-eight percent, is unknown. Eleven percent, community transmission, and then three is travel related. Okay. Now, community transmission. It, th- these are the linguistics that I struggle with. Does this mean in places that are allowed to be open, like a, let's say if they were open, like a, like a hair salon, or is or is it just being out and about anywhere? Uh, my assumption is that it's you were you were contact traced. Okay. That. You, you contracted COVID-19, you went through a questionnaire, and they said, yeah, I was here, I was there, I was there. They said, ah, we did see an outbreak in this location, and that's likely where you caught it. I, I don't know, I'm guessing. I, I'm the same with you. It's, you know, I'm trying to interpret the It's rather wording. nebulous is what I'm yeah. saying as to what that means. Absolutely. Um, Travel-related. Well, that would, <laughs> we, won't, we don't have enough time to go there uh, today. There's been so much said about travel and that, uh, that rich... Couple, um, sugar oh, yeah. daddy and girl went to. Uh, what in uh, British Columbia? Yeah, went up to uh, went up to the Yukon and pretended. That, oh my God! What a stupid, stupid thing to do. Dumb story. It's almost like you don't want to even tell that story. Like sh- just go to jail. Um, you know, just get psh, go, get out, get off the screen. We don't want to know you. Um, anyway. <laughs> How about I get off the screen here and we get uh, Gil back on the program. It's been a long time since we've had Gil here yes. as part of the uh, live stream Niagara family. Want to catch up with what he's been up to. He won an award recently and he's going to teach us a card trick. Gil Beaulieu. Okay. Where are you, Gil? How you doing, Pat? I'm right here at home. <laughs> You're right here, hey. right here at home with your own marketing wall and the whole deal. That's awesome. <laughs> I had to come up with an in-home studio to teach the kids somehow, so that's, got to send a message to them. That's so great. how are you doing, Lee? Happy Thursday, and you too, Kevin. Happy Happy Thursday uh, to you. Now, uh, before we go any further, uh, we want to give you the big pat on the back. The uh, Tell us about the golden wand of excellence. Tell us about that. Okay. Well, I just brought it along with me for us here today. Wow, um, I belong to a larger group. The Ontario Children's Magic Academy is part of the Discover Magic family, um, which is located throughout the entire world. Okay. And basically what we do is we run an um, enrichment program that uses magic as the base to teach kids a lot of skills that they're going to use throughout life to become a true magician, being respectful, prepared, enthusiastic. We have eight traits that we do that for in okay. eight lessons over our program. And um, when COVID hit, um, Discover Magic family was one of the first to jump online and say, okay, we got to like keep these kids engaged, teach them virtually. And I think the award is basically for doing things like that. I went out into the community. I became part of the We Street family. I think we did like, what was it, Kevin? About 10 weeks of programs on Saturday mornings, every week on Saturday mornings. Yeah, we did a bunch of um, some of my most enjoyable programs. I really liked your approach, Gil, uh, Gil and I liked how you how you really not only talked to children and talked to youth, but you gave back and you showed people how to do tricks. So we weren't left wanting and wondering. You actually <laughs> said, hey, look, here's your first yeah. step towards becoming a true magician. Love doing those shows, Gil. Oh, I, I loved them too. It was like a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but it was a whole lot of fun. 
And I think the award just goes to that. Like I, I went out and did drive-by birthday parties. I didn't charge for these. I showed up in my van. I sat up right on the sidewalk or the driveway. The kids came out and sat in chairs, you know, like 10, 15 feet away. Um, and they spaced themselves out. If there were a lot of them throughout the entire front yard or the front driveway. And I never charged anything. Now, some people did give me a donation back and said, you know, like, go out and do some more. And I think the Umbrella Organization just decided to award um, some of our presenters throughout the world. I wasn't the only one to receive one of these. I think there was a good dozen or so out of the um, 80 some odd presenters that we have worldwide. Um, just to say, you know what, like you went out there and you went, we call going the extra or the extra mile. We just That's... go, just going the extra. Because sometimes the mile during COVID is not enough. You got to do more than that. Yeah, absolutely. Just to get out and engage people. Well, good for you. Um... I am just so uh, so often uh, gratified to hear about the number of volunteers, the people that just give their time, uh, and it's become even more prevalent here during this whole uh, this whole COVID thing. So I'm I'm, I'm sure though that your activity has has lessened uh, somewhat. How you, you doing? Okay, you, you you're dealing you're dealing with this whole shutdown. All right, I'm dealing with it. Okay, um, I I do things like this. Um, Throughout the entire summer, I still had a couple of students. As a matter of fact, one of my students that I've had for just over a year is the first Canadian student in the Discover Magic program to graduate what we call a black wand course. We have four different courses of different colors, purple, green, orange, and blue. But black wand is somebody who's taken all those courses. Now they've got that extra to do more. And Emmett Swart um, was the student who became the first Canadian Discover Magic student well to be a done. Black One graduate. Yes, indeed. Oh, Applause. That is very cool. That is very cool. Um, okay, so you asked me to bring a deck of cards. Uh, I did, and that's the only thing that I arranged with you ahead of time was to bring a deck of cards. That that's is, you are correct, sir. You, you we have yet. not previously discussed this segment in any way, even down to the point that I have it wrapped in uh, my favorite broccoli uh, elastic here. So I can take this <laughs> off now. All right. Yes, you can take that off now. So just, and, so, that, uh, just, so, that, just so that all of you watching, uh, Gil did send me a, a, a text. Uh, and it said, can you bring a deck of cards some more? I said, yeah. So I sent him a text later, and, and I said, I have a deck of cards, but they're an old deck, and they're all mixed up, so they're not in any particular order, uh, and there's no jokers or anything in, uh, in this deck. So it's just a regular deck of cards that you'd... Uh, Let me see there, Lee. Fan them out. Fan them out so we can see them. All right. Yeah, and I, I would say there are two jokers in this deck of cards. There's you me, and me sitting here at home and you hosting your show there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw Sorry, that. Sorry, had to go there, had to go I there. I know, I saw that joke coming. I saw it coming. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, I, am at your, I am at your mercy. What do you want me to do? Okay, the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to go through the deck and take out the four aces. I always oh, pick the aces because for me, the four aces are the four cards in a deck of cards that seem to work best with me, my personality. Oh, there's one. Look up your sleeves, Lee. Nothing up his sleeve. All right, there's two. Nothing up his sleeve. He has his arms up his sleeves. He kind of needs them to do the card trick. There's with us. three and four. All right, there's the four aces. We have. Uh, how can I? How can I do this so that you can? That's okay. I, I I can. Yeah, if you move your mug out of the way, I can see the table on top better. But I don't have to look right down on it, and I don't want to. That's okay. Um, the next thing I want you to do is, with the remaining deck of cards, not the four aces. Just take out any 16 cards you want. Any 16 cards? 16 cards. Card. 16 random lay, cards. It do could I, be the do I lay 16. them face down? Yeah, you can put them just face down on the table or just off right. to you in right. your other hand, however you want to do it. I'm going to assume the aces are face up on your table at the moment. Yeah. And the cards that you're dealing out right now, the 16 are going to be face down, which is perfect because you're already one step ahead. 13, 14. I see your technique there, Lee. It seems like you've uh, dealt from the bottom of the deck before. I have, back in uh, my Wild Earp days. Okay, so, um, yeah, so what I did uh, is I shuffled them a bit more, and uh, then I, I dealt uh, from top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, up to 16. Let me just count these. I, I would figure you were a bit of a card shark with the hats that you wear. I kind of assumed that. So you got 16 okay, cards are, that there, you randomly I, picked. I can confirm there are 16 cards. 
and the four aces. Okay. Yeah. Now, the faces are obviously face up. If they aren't, put the four aces face up. I they think are, they already will. They are face up. Spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts. Perfect. Now, what I want you to do is you're going to take one ace face up and put it in that packet of 16 cards anywhere you want face up. And you can do that with all four of the aces. Okay, just stick, in other words, you're going to have a packet stick of... In, stick them in at random. At random, but face up. Oh, face up. Okay. Face up. So all the aces will be face up, all the other cards face down. Can I put them on the top or the bottom, or do they have... A anywhere you want, as long as the aces are face up, all right. the other cards are face down. You can put them anywhere you want in that little packet. Okay. And, and just let me know you look like you're doing great. I think one okay. more left. Okay, we've got, got, got one more left. Um, Anywhere okay. in that packet, okay. then you're just going to throw okay. that packet yep. up. Yep. I, I don't know. I don't know whether they're together or separate. I don't know. That That's perfect, because the less you know, the less I know, the more amazing this oh, is going to be. Oh, believe me, I know nothing. Oh, no, I want you to just, <laughs> just do a, a simple overhand shuffle with that packet. Like this. Yeah. Perfect. You can take as long as you want, as short as you want. Okay, it I'll is do it. your I'll show, do it. so okay. I don't know your timing. All right. I'll do it one more. Okay. There we go. Great. Okay. Now keep the packet in one hand at the moment. Because what you're going to do is from the top to the table, you're going to deal down 10 cards. So start at the top for one, down to the table for two, put that on top of the do one I, you just do put I, do down. Do I flip them over? Nope. Just keep them exactly the way you got them. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Perfect. I put the other stack that's in your hand on the table, sort of next to it with a little bit of space in between. So now you got two piles. You can pick either one of those piles, but just pick one and turn that entire pile over on the table. Perfect. I saw you did that. You picked one pile, you took it over. Yep. Now, Leave a little bit of space between those piles. Yep. Because we're going to use the metal. Yep. Just a little bit more there, Lee. Perfect. What we're going to do now is we're going to do a perfect interlacing of those cards. And we're going to do it the super, super easy way. You're going to take your right hand to the right hand side pile. Mm hmm. Okay. Yep. Use, use your other right hand there, Lee. Okay. <laughs> perfect. This You're is my right hand. to me, so sometimes it goes backwards. It looks You're different on take TV. It does. It's mirrored. Yeah. So you're going to take the first card on that pile and put it into the center. Face down? Face down, yep. You're going to keep everything exactly the same way. Now you're going to go to the second pile Yep. and take the first card, put it on top of the one that you just put in the center. All right. Now go to the first pile, take that card. So you're going to go back and forth. Okay, for the whole the whole deck, back and forth. Yeah. Now make sure. Okay, go back one move, because I wasn't watching. Make sure that you're putting them like you, you use the right hand pile for first, left hand pile for yep. the second, right hand pile for the third, yep. left hand pile for the fourth. So you're interlacing them perfectly. So what you're doing is you're going to be creating one pile in the center. Right. Okay. Now I know what it's like to That's be, be uh, Canada Scott. Good. What did I just do? Uh, I think you're now going from right hand to your left hand. If I'm watching, boom, it's hard boom. to see because I just see a small window at times. Oh, yeah. that's So that worked perfectly. Okay. Okay. So you went back and forth. Perfectly. I started okay. here. I started here and I finished here. So that's good. That's how it should have been. Yep. Now what I want you to do is just square up the cards in front of you on the table, and yep. you're going to do one one complete cut. So you're going to take some cards off the top, put it to the side, take the rest of them on the bottom, put it right back on top. Make sure you get all the cards to do a complete cut. Okay. So I I, I cut the cards, and then I yes. put I put what was on the bottom on the top. Yes. Okay. Because that means you just did a complete cut. Right. Okay. Okay, now, 
because we read, we read left to right, we're going to use a set of four piles of cards in front of you. Number one will be on the furthest left. Number two, three, and four. Okay, so you so go we'll left go, to boom, right, boom, just boom, like you're dealing in a card game. You right. got it. Perfect. Okay. So you're like dealing out to four people in a card game. So you go one, two, three, four, go back to one. And we do it two, two three, okay. four. So, all right. Back to one, two, three, four. Got it. So you're always starting at one, going to four. Got it. All going right. back to one. So you're doing that cycle of cards until they're all dealt out. Okay, done. Four piles. Okay. I want you to pick even or odd. Do you want to be odd or do you want to be even, Lee? I'm usually odd, so I'll pick odd. Perfect. What I want you to do is yeah. you're going to take... Well, you picked odd, which is one and three. Those are the odd numbers that are in front of you. Right. You can put one on top of three or three on top of one. Okay, I'm putting one on top of three. Perfect. Okay. Now you got two and four left. You can put two on top of four or four on top of two. Four on top of two. Perfect. Now you got those two piles again that we had just a little while ago. Yeah. We're going to do the same thing as before. I want you to pick one of those piles, either one, but just one. Start to get ahead. And turn that pile over on the table. Okay. T pick one pile and turn it over. Right? Turn it over. All right. Oh, look at that. Two and a three. All right. Very, very good. Perfect. Now, what I want you to do is take those two piles and just do a normal ripple shuffle on the table. Oh, doesn't have to be a perfect interlacing like we did before. Just a normal ripple shuffle with the two piles. In other words, we've gone through one, a whole why series. Does, why does one pile seem fatter than the other? Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just the cards themselves. It shouldn't seem fatter. If you did, if you followed all these instructions and did it rightly, we're, we're about well, to like, find out. Okay. okay. <laughs> I won't blame you, that's for sure. All right, here we go. <laughs> what I want you to do is take one hand, put it on top of the pile right now. So that nobody can move it, nobody can switch that. So we just went through a whole series, a whole complex series of mixing up these cards. You have no idea what card is where, where the aces are, if the aces are even face up, face down anymore. You, yeah, you got that right. things up, lay down, inside out, and in between. Exactly. Yep, you're right. I and what you can do right now is just take a quick peek at those cards. Do you see a face-up card or a face-up down card? I got a face-up card. Okay, put your hand back on top. So you got your cards face down. I'm going to snap my fingers four times. One, <laughs> two, three, four. What I want you to do is take those cards, stand them out in your hands, you're going to see four cards that are face up. You should see just four cards face up. Fan those out. Spread them on the table. I, d I must have done. Yeah, flip it the other way, Lee. Oh, flip Every it the other way? You see a face up card, I want you to pull that out and show it to us what hey, it is. Hang on, just. No, hang on. I must have done something wrong. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. I got, <laughs> I got a whole whack of cards face up. I don't know, what about the other one? How many do you got face down? Uh, uh, Lee, I can see the ones that are face down. Do it the other way because I think you, I think you came pretty close to nailing. Oh yeah, I did. I did it right after all. Look at that! Yeah. I just didn't turn it over. Turn them around, Lee, so we can Look see them on the camera. Oh, you got four cards that are face the down, four, right? The, the fourth, or, yeah. I, I just didn't flip it over like you told me to. And each one of those cards are the four aces are the we started four with. Aces. The only cards turned the other way around. Isn't that... And, and even Lee did it in his hands even by, right here, right now, just by following my instructions. Let's give Lee a hand. All that, right, Lee. Well, I, I was, that's too much pressure, man. That's... <laughs> That's that, Gil. Go, Gil, uh, imagine no. the pressure of me on stage every time. That's you uh, had to do the magic in your hand. That is, and there, and and there they are. Both the only four that are face up after all that are, uh, uh, are, are the aces. Now, the, I want you to be honest here. Uh, between one and ten, uh, what were you? What was your prognosis of success there? 
Well, as long as uh, my, uh, <laughs> I was of, hovering around a two or three of, of my success, not not, yeah, not exactly. so good. I was thinking, you know, I could have made, I could have messed it up at some point in time, but I thought I was doing it right. Uh, but uh, Gil, that's uh, that's amazing. Thank you, man. That's that's cool. Isn't that so awesome that I can be literally kilometers away from you, and the magic is and still magic. happening yeah. in your very own hands? Yeah. Uh, you, 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 and uh, you and Harry Potter, you're my, uh, you're my heroes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harry Potter has done the world for magic with kids. Has I it? don't even think discover magic would have even been invented if it wasn't for Harry Potter and the interest in magic. Let me ask you a question before we set you free here, Gil. Um, of all of the magicians, I'm sure, or um, mentalists, or sleight of hand artists, or whatever, because magicians fall into as so many different categories. Um, who would you say would would be your uh, your your favorite or your hero or or whatever in the world of magic? Who do you really look up to? Um, living or dead? Either. Either. Uh, without a doubt, for me personally, it had to be Doug Henning. Henning? Doug Henning was a Canadian magician. Yeah. He went head to head with TV specials in the late eighties or late seventies, early eighties with with David Copperfield. Yeah. Very early on in his career, um, he came out of Oakville. Um, there's a club in Hamilton named after him. That was my first magic club I ever went to when I was 15 years old. It's the Doug Henning Magic Club yeah. after it was renamed. Um, without a doubt, uh, if he was still alive today, Lord knows what he would have done. Uh, he passed on way, way too early way in the world of magic. Yeah. yeah. And, and even now, he's considered like one of the top five magicians of all time. And, and again, one of the things, there he is, there's Doug. Uh, one of the things, of course, that uh, is so often lost on people is the entertainment value and the fun that uh, good magicians such as yourself and people like Doug brought to brought to people. Because it wasn't it wasn't just about the trick; it was about, as you called it, the presentation. Right? It's the it's it's the whole feeling you get from being in the room that that. Is is entertaining, and I'm sure it may. I'm sure it's gratifying for people like yourself, especially when you deal with kids as much as you do. It, it is, and and just think, like, how did you feel when you finally realized you actually did that trick right in your very hands? Well, I was just I was just happy that I followed orders correctly. The same way I feel when I hang out with my wife at home. If I got something right, it's I'm happy. Uh, but oh. and uh, and the thing is, you know what happens to me though, as I was growing up. Um, people would show me card tricks and things like that, and I would learn them. And then, I don't, you don't do them every day, and I've forgotten anything I ever learned about, about doing these, these tricks. But you know what? It's almost, when you learn how to do them, it's almost not fun. Because... Yeah, yeah. It, it can actually oh. take away from it, depending on how yeah. you look at it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, with me being a magician, I always wanted to know how it was done. So that I can learn how to do it my sure. way and then entertain people with it. Yeah. And, and speaking about learning how to do it, there's an easy way for you and everyone else to learn how to do this exact trick okay. that they can do over their own Zoom meetings, Skype meetings, or FaceTime with All right. relatives. All they have to do is go back to this show, go back to this segment, write down the exact same orders that I gave you, and they'll be able to do this trick themselves with a little bit of practice. Okay, that's pretty cool. So you were actually learning how to do the trick while you were actually being part of the presentation of it. Okay, fair enough. Gil Beaulieu, thank you very much. Uh, glad to get you back online here. And uh, uh, thank. Um, I'm very happy that I was able to follow directions because I would have hated to screw up your trick. <laughs> well, that makes two of us up here very happy about that. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, my friend. Come back and see us, okay? I would love to. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Take it easy and enjoy the sunshine. Yeah, congratulations on the golden wand. Thank you. Yay. All right. Yeah, there it is. All right. Cool. Uh, Kevin, uh, fun show today. Interesting show today. Did we hear anything back from Alicia? No, not yet? No, I've not. Texted her about five minutes ago, letting her know that, hey, if you want to come back on, if you got time for an update, and I imagine she's got her hands full. Yeah, because we don't, because because we don't mind, uh, we don't mind staying on longer. Our our time is, uh, is our own here. So, um, but just in case she is, 
uh, available to come back on and let us know what's happening. I'll take just a minute once again to thank Alicia Herter of Chrome Artistic and Barbering as well as uh, Matt Botus of Frontier Barbers and Company that joined us today to talk about uh, nuances that are going on in that industry here in uh, Niagara. I'm hoping that our interview didn't lead to the um, issues that Alicia is dealing with right now at her shop, but uh, we'll find out more about that later for sure. Jen Jenkins of Niagara Falls, uh, Master Chef Canada contestant for the second time. This time she's uh, back to win. That's the that's the uh, the secondary title of the new Master Chef series is Master Chef Canada back to win. Twelve people that have participated before, including Jen, that are back to win it this time. And that gets uh, started on air February the 14th, Valentine's Day which is kind of cool. Um, and of course, uh, as, as always, Gil Beaulieu, uh, what, a, what a treat the man is and what, uh, what fun he's done and has with the, with the kids and, and everybody. Just uh, great to have him back on. Um, we stream Niagara, Kevin Jack uh, and his partner Brandon Schramm and we stream power this program. Uh, Gail's Gas Bars fuel this program. We appreciate their support. And uh, our hosts here, Fiddler's Poor House, Dave McPerry, and thank you very much for allowing us uh, in your pub, even though you're not allowed to be open. Uh, that's a shame, but again, they are open for uh, curbside pickup and uh, those kinds of things, as per usual. They open about, what, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Kevin? I think so, yeah. Okay, so you can uh, peruse their menu online, etc., cetera, and uh, use that. Again, Nick at Niagara 411 and his contributors, we appreciate you being here. My name is Lee Sterry. Uh, we have had a blast today. A lot goes on in Niagara, and uh, we'll do it again. Episode 5, Season 2, next Thursday at noon. We're going to play you out with some uh, local artist music once again. We talked to this young lady a few weeks ago, and um, she has a new release out. Her name is Jacqueline. And uh, we're going to play you out with, what's the name of the tune we're going to see today, Kev? It's This Dance. This Dance. You can find her on YouTube. It's a Jacqueline, J-A-C-E-L-Y-N. Went to Brock University from the GTA. Credits Niagara with really not, not only shaping her music career, but pushing her in the direction of music. And now uh, she's a jazz musician. Yeah. So here's a lovely uh, Jacqueline. I hope you have yourself a good week, what's left of it, and a super weekend. Uh, we'll catch you again in a week. Cheers. Draw me close.
Love will do the rest. Love will do the rest. Love will do the rest.